It's pear. It wasn't potato. It's more sweet. <laughs> Caroline Diesler. She's a fitness influencer. She's pretty popular on Instagram. She's kind of a freely clone. Lots of fruit, lots of carbs, extremely short shorts. Well, I don't, where do you even find those? <laughs> Just to be clear, I'm not a prude. I don't care about the shorts or anything like that. I have no issue with someone profiting off their own body. I don't think that's inherently bad. But let's not pretend the vast majority of her followers aren't there because of photos like this in the hopes that they too can be this thin. I've actually talked about Caroline Dieseler before more than a year ago now. I did a little review of her 21 day reset vegan reset book based on how she actually eats as she says in the book. And yeah, it wasn't great. It was a whole lot of fruit. The calorie situation was really weird. It was supposed to be like a normal amount of calories, 2000 calories or whatever, but some days were way below that. Some days were like well over 3000 calories. It was super weird. It didn't seem very well planned. Uh, it said sugar free, but she used coconut sugar. And I think actually like chocolate bars in some of the recipes that contained sugar, cane sugar. Oh, and maple syrup, so much maple syrup. <laughs> a good amount of fat, so that's one way she's very different from Freely. No oil or salt, I don't believe, and very low protein. So why am I talking about Caroline now? Well, she got pregnant. She's already given birth just recently, so she still has a newborn. She is already exploiting her newborn on her page, like you do. It looks like she has quite a few what I ate todays while pregnant, also some like right now postpartum and while breastfeeding. So I thought I'd take a look at those right now with you guys. <laughs> That's so cringy. We're here together. But yeah, maybe she has improved things at least slightly. Hopefully more protein while pregnant and also now while breastfeeding. Uh, B12 as well. I don't know if she was taking B12 or not, but I think on her website she said, well, yeah, if you're deficient, take B12. Like, no, no, no. If you don't eat animal products, you don't eat B12. So just take a B12 supplement. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your doctor's time going in to find out your B12 status, which might not even be very helpful. It might give you false, not false hope, but a false sense of like, oh, my B12 is fine because doctors, they're going to give you a blood test, but that's not actually the best way to test for B12. You actually want an MMA test. It's a urine test. Point is, if you're vegan, take a B12 supplement. So I thought we'd start with this longer one. Most of these are just going to be little videos on Instagram, but she does have a YouTube video. Oh, in the title, it says holistic nutritionist. I'm pretty sure this is one of those like online certificate things. She's not a dietitian. So she's taking like three different probiotics. I'm not sure what the point of that is. Expensive, but probably fine during pregnancy. I took a probiotic, just one, <laughs> just one probiotic during pregnancy, just for this weird it's a weird thing. I don't know what it is. I don't feel like explaining it. I am also taking a prenatal supplement. Um, I don't know if I really told you guys, but I am trying to conceive right now. Um, oh, yeah. so she's not actually pregnant in this one. She's still trying to conceive or maybe was trying to and then found out she actually was pregnant during this just very early. But yeah, prenatal, that's great. And taking it before when she's trying to conceive, that is fantastic. Pure Synergy prenatal. Oh, it looks expensive. You know what I mean? Like it just... It just looks expensive. $43 for 30 servings. Woo! Okay. Does that say four tablets daily? Oh no. They look like a pretty standard prenatal. They've got iodine, which is terrific. Some prenatals don't. Actually, a company just contacted me wanting to shill for them, and I went and looked at their prenatal gummies, and they didn't even have iodine in them. Vegan gummies, and you don't have iodine sir. No, thank you. But yeah, these have iodine, they have zinc, selenium, they've got iron, more iron than the RDA for women, which is standard for a prenatal, 27 milligrams. Got choline, good amount of choline, actually, a lot more than most prenatals that I've seen. It can be easy to be low on choline, particularly for Caroline if she's eating the, the dates and everything. <laughs> Not really a good source of choline. Most of the good sources like soy, I don't think she's really eating. B vitamins, vitamin E, we got vitamin D3 from algae. B12, vitamin B12, that is fantastic. You do not want to be pregnant and low in B12. It's very good her taking a prenatal before. That's what you're supposed to do, right? If you are trying to get pregnant, you should be taking a prenatal and trying to eat healthy because much of the issues with low B12 are happening in those first few weeks when you don't necessarily know you're pregnant. 
I have my celery juice in the morning and then I have my green smoothie. So it's really more about starting light to heavy, having my water first, <laughs> celery juice, smoothie, fruit, um, and go like this. And this is just the best for your digestion. Of course, that's not necessarily true. I mean, if that helps you with digestion, eating a lighter breakfast and then a heavier dinner, fine. But there are lots of people who eat heavier breakfast and then lighter. What is it? Breakfast like a king. Basically, big to little, right? The opposite of what she's doing. A bigger breakfast, a normal size lunch, and then a smaller dinner because being super full at night may uh, interrupt your sleep. I don't think any of that really matters. Just eat healthfully in whatever way you're able to do that, right? If that means like three square meals a day, terrific. If that means lots of snacks, whatever. There's no evidence that any of that really matters. But this is very common among like raw foodists and like the high fruit crowd. They are very big on digestion and eating like mono meals and eating juices and smoothies and stuff early in the day. Don't eat fruit after other foods. It's like food combining nonsense. Don't eat fruit and fat. Oh my god, apple and peanut butter. You're just gonna die. You'll never poop right again. Having lots of medjool date. Okay, they are not high in calcium. Eight ounces, half of a pound of dates, over 600 calories, and only 145 milligrams of calcium. Dates are like fine. They're really one of the worst fruits. They're not nearly as high in antioxidants as like berries are. And they're pretty high calorie, even higher calorie than bananas. Definitely not one of the better fruits, but raw foodists or semi-raw foodists like Caroline really love them because they have calories. And if you're eating mostly fruit, you need at least some fruit that has more calories than, you know, 50 per pound. It is smoothie time. I made my go-to green smoothie. Um, so basically, I kind of make this all the time. I have lots of spinach, um, celery, uh, mango, one first banana, um, wheatgrass powder, spirulina, and lemon ginger. Wheatgrass powder and spirulina. <laughs> No! I am in the kitchen preparing some recipes for my savory reset. And this is a, these are some buckwheat crackers. They turn out so well. Um, they're also low fat. <laughs> She's saying they've turned out so well. And you can see just how floppy and like not crisp and crunchy they are. <laughs> Obviously, I have no issue with raw foodists calling raw concoctions crackers, just like I have no problem with vegans calling soy and pea protein mixtures beef and whatever else, obviously. Sometimes it's like, it's so far removed <laughs> from what a cracker is. Like, it can you call it a cracker? I don't know. And then we've got these little weird looking donut things. Here we have some mini bagels. No oil, no yeast, um, only good stuff in here. That's what I'm talking about. No yeast, nothing that makes a bagel a bagel. <laughs> Oats, sunflower, pumpkin, linseeds, chia, salt, water. Hey, a little bit of salt. It's kind of in the shape of a bagel, but hmm. <laughs> really, I don't care what you call it. That's obviously very healthy. I don't know how tasty it is, but yeah, oats and sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds and chia seeds, omega-3s. Yeah. That's healthy. Here I made my signature homemade bread. It's the same thing, isn't it? It is so good and so easy to make. Like it looks fancy and special, right? It looks like oats and nuts and like dates or something smashed together. I don't know. It doesn't look particularly fancy to me. It looks exactly like the bagels. So, I mean, there's only so much you can do, right? She doesn't eat a lot of grains. She doesn't eat a lot of legumes. She doesn't eat a lot of cooked food. So... There's only so much you can do when you're trying to replicate a bread product, when you can't use grains. Like, it, we're not just talking gluten-free, right? Like, she wants whole oats and nuts and seeds. That's that's basically all you can do. She's good at marketing that little, Caroline, help me make this. She's got the link to her shop. Very savvy. I just asked you guys on Instagram whether I should make the caramel muffins from my ebook Sweet Vegan or... Yeah, caramel, that's definitely dates, right? It's, it's the same. It's going to be lots of nuts and lots of dates. Basically, all of her sweet stuff from the reset, vegan reset, dates and nuts and seeds and maple syrup but it's sugar-free, guys. I prepped a super delicious, healthy um, potato gratin. This is one of my favorite things to eat and Pear loves it. And I made a even lighter version. <laughs> it's super creamy, it's super light. Um, 
this is going to be for the savory reset, guys. You can eat the whole thing. So this entire video is just buy her ebooks, I guess. Obviously, there's no milk or anything in it. Potatoes and what cashews blended up maybe with a little bit of salt, something like that. So basically exactly the same. It doesn't seem like she's changed her diet at all other than the addition of the prenatal, which again, terrific, hugely important, makes a big difference. She is eating good amounts of fat and she's eating omega-3s from chia seeds. Where's the protein? She's getting some from the nuts and seeds and the oats and whatnot, particularly when you're trying to conceive and when you're pregnant and when you're breastfeeding. You really want to prioritize protein. And because her protein intake is so low, even just a little bit more would make a big difference, right? Just a scoop of protein powder in her smoothie would make a big difference. You know, a cup or even half a cup of lentils, something like that. I don't know what it is about beans. I think she had maybe a couple recipes in her book with beans, but I don't think I've seen any that she eats, right? Anything from her what I ate today is with with beans in them. Okay, so I just googled Caroline Diesler legumes just to see if maybe, I don't know, she has a thing about it on her website saying why she doesn't eat beans, doesn't prioritize beans. And the first link was to this Instagram account where they have listed her food pyramid. I think they're promoting some group of books or some something and she's part of it. And so this is her food pyramid. You can see on the bottom, staple foods, sweet fruit, you got the dates and bananas there, of course. Greens and vegetables, she says, makes up about 30% of her diet. Then she has cooked carbs. It's all, you know, low protein stuff on there. No picture of beans or anything. And then some healthy fats, nuts and seeds, avocado. And then vegan comfort foods, fresh sourdough bread and vegan dumplings. <laughs> so interesting that those are her those are her comfort foods. The implication is that that's like super unhealthy. There's definitely way worse food. I don't know. It's very weird. We also thought legumes for an additional protein source would be a good inclusion too. What do you think? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I still don't know why she doesn't eat very many beans. Very likely she believes what some vegans believe, which is just that protein isn't very important, particularly raw vegans, right? If you just eat anything, even if you just eat bananas, you'll get plenty of protein, right? Which is just not true. She probably believes that you don't need to prioritize protein, just eat enough calories and you'll get enough. All right. So this is when she's pregnant. This is from day one of the 10 day vegan reset that she's doing with her followers. Again, these resets are just how she eats normally. Ew. Yeah, that's just a lot of dates. Oh, I'm triggered. I can't. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I just can't. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Lots of sweet stuff. Lots of fruits. Potatoes, of course. It's pear. It wasn't potato. It's more sweet <laughs> with obviously some sort of date sauce on top. Oh my goodness. Hey, some savory? Potato, carrot, type thing. I think some celery in there. Probably not any beans. I don't see any beans. It looks like she's eating basically the same way while pregnant. Here's another one. Again, we've got the juice, papaya, apples, some sort of chocolatey date banana thing, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, some peanuts on top. Hey, protein, lysine. All right. Some sort of date. Maybe that's peanut. That might have peanut in it too. Uh, beets beet salad. Hey, more peanuts. All right. I'll take it. It's recommended that women in general get like 75 grams of protein per day while pregnant and vegan women should probably get a little bit more because of bioavailability issues of protein from plant foods. So yeah, that, yeah. Even if she is eating more calories, she's eating more calories from dates and potatoes <laughs> that are low protein foods. Okay. So postpartum, three weeks postpartum. I don't know how much of this I can show because I'm not going to show her baby, but we've got celery juice, of course. Green smoothie, very green smoothie. Ooh, you know, that has like no fat in it just by the looks of it. Six oranges. Oh my God. Some dried figs, dry roasted cashews, salad plus caro dressing. I'm not sure what caro is. Squash toasts, Caroline, Caro, I get it. Unless that dressing was made of straight beans. <laughs> it's just, it's, man, just eat some beans. Come on. And I'm not sure, hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about the, she's still really like showing her body in like every video and postpartum, here I am, three weeks postpartum. The unsaid, like, I don't even look like I just had a baby. I don't care about people showing their bodies but in this context, it just makes me a little uncomfortable because really, ideally, 
you shouldn't look like that three weeks postpartum. Not to shame her or to shame body types, but just looking at the data, Emily Oster talked about this in Crib Sheets years ago now at this point. Oh, that's actually a book I have down here. Wait, no, not Crib Sheets. Crib Sheets is about baby. No, expecting better. It's this one. I think it even says it. Yeah, why gaining too much weight might be safer than gaining too little. Promoting this as healthy, which clearly she's doing, makes me more than a little bit uncomfortable you're probably not going to look like that postpartum and you probably should not look like that postpartum. To end on a positive, she is taking B12, she is taking iron, she's taking iodine that was in the prenatal too, and I assume she's still taking that postpartum while breastfeeding her baby. The big concern now is not really for her baby, it's more for her and the lack of protein, possibly lack of calcium, although she eats so many greens, even though they're raw. I don't know, I would be a little uncomfortable personally. I would prefer to have some sort of calcium fortified something or some cooked greens, some cooked broccoli cooked kale, low oxalates, right? Oh yeah, because the smoothie, isn't that full of spinach? Yeah, it looks like maybe a lot of her greens, some of her greens are coming from spinach. Spinach is not a good source of calcium. Yeah, I would be a lot more comfortable personally eating cooked greens, drinking some sort of calcium fortified soy milk preferably or pea protein milk, get some extra protein, right? The contents of her breast milk are probably going to be perfectly fine. The, the big issue again would be B12, possibly iodine, vitamin D. Hopefully she is giving her baby vitamin D drops if she's not giving baby a little bit of sun. It's not really recommended to do that anymore. Their skin is so thin, it's a lot safer to give them vitamin D drops. Hopefully she's doing that or taking a lot of vitamin D. A few studies have shown that you can get your babies enough vitamin D if you're breastfeeding, if you yourself are taking high amounts of vitamin D, like 5,000 international units a day, something like that. So hopefully she's doing one of those two things. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable, right? It's really uncomfortable people promoting this sort of thing, particularly when children are involved. Yeah, it sucks. And then of course the showing the baby in almost every single photo, every single reel is her with the baby, which of course, right? Her whole Instagram has been her and her lifestyle and just doing stuff in her house. Well, now she's got a baby on her all the time. So of course it's easier to just have your baby in the photos, in the reels. And of course we women love to see that. You're more likely to have people view your stuff if you have a cute little baby, you know, it's, it's good for um, engagement and views. So yeah, it's really easy for her, for people like her, I'm sure, to justify plastering your baby all over your Instagram or your YouTube channel. I mean, that's the reality. If I did videos with my kids, I would get more views. Some of you guys would leave. Some of you would go, oh my god, I can't believe she's doing this now. That's bullshit. Some of you, yeah. There's a reason these channels do so well. A lot of people, a lot of women watch that shit. So yeah, I'm 90 something percent positive that I would get more views if I did that sort of thing. If you guys could see my kids, oh my God. And oh, my little seven month old has a little tooth and just, oh my God, I'm, okay. So here's the thing. Both six year old and four year old got their teeth really, really late, <laughs> like really late. Six year old, about a year, maybe it was right before a year. I think it was like right after a year. And then four year old, even later, than that. I'm used to seeing little one-year-olds totally toothless. I'm not used to seeing a six-month-old with a little tooth. It's just, it's so exciting. And I can feel the second one about to pop out. Oh my god, it's so cute. So that's Caroline Diesler. Obviously, I'm not doing this to shame her or anyone. I mean, obviously, there are people who are just going to be uncomfortable with this type of content regardless. And I understand that. You know, I just don't watch it, right? It's not cool to promote this stuff. You know, you can't just say it's your journey or whatever, particularly her when she is selling and really heavily marketing her books. Almost every single thing is like, this is a recipe from this book. This is a recipe from this book, right? Like she is really heavily promoting this as the way to eat and a healthy way to eat and a healthy way to eat while you're trying to conceive and while pregnant and while breastfeeding. Eat fruits and vegetables, eat dates. If you want to eat dates, they're fine. They're healthy. They got fiber and some other shit. They're fine. But also eat some grains, eat some legumes, eat some salt. Sodium is good for you. And take your B12. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too um, annoying. I just feel like I'm really obnoxious today. I don't know why. I'm on my period, so I'm also like pissed. 
I'm not taking ibuprofen. I'm going through a period unmedicated. I'm actually okay right now, but this morning was not, was no, not good. The reason I am is because my last period, I took my ibuprofen, which is the only thing that works. And I got this really painful, it's like, like a heartburn, but at the top of your stomach type thing. I guess that's what indigestion is, like uh, dyspepsia. That's the only thing I could find when I look it up. But I've had that before, but usually I have it like once or twice a year. And it's really like fire, like burning in your stomach. And it just stays there for hours and it sucks. And so I got that. And then the next night I got it again. And then I think the third night I got it again. And so it was like, okay, well, I know ibuprofen. I know NSAIDs have an effect on the stomach. They can increase the risk for stomach ulcers, things like that. And I have taken a lot of ibuprofen in my life. I used to basically live on the stuff when I was a teenager and not on birth control or anything and trying to get through a very, very painful period. I would just take lots of ibuprofen, <laughs> like way more than the, than the max. But anyway, I have not done that in a very long time, but still, uh, yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll stop taking ibuprofen. And I did, and it stopped. I've had one since I took it. I've had it happen one time, but other than that, it stopped. Maybe it's not that, you know, I could test it again. I'm very tempted to take some ibuprofen, but that pain is so bad and nothing works for it. It's not like heartburn where I can just take a Tums and then it helps. And then I can take Famotidine or something. And then it's, you know, totally gone for hours. It doesn't seem to work at all. Tums, uh, Pepto-Bismol, they don't do anything. So I'm just in pain for like, four hours. So yeah, no ibuprofen for me. No coffee either. I just realized, oh no, today was my last day. <laughs> and I just bought, oh my God, I did. I bought more creamer. I knew not to buy more coffee, but I bought a new thing, creamer. Well, I don't want to waste the creamer. So maybe I should go to the store and get coffee and I'll try this again next time. Cause this is really bad timing. I'm freaking on my period. I almost said pregnant. I've also been eating blow pops all day. That's been my medicine since I can't have ibuprofen. I think it kind of helped. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video if you did. It helps me a lot. Please subscribe. If you want to see more stuff from me, that also helps me a lot. I really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate all of my patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I did just post the second exclusive video for February for $5 plus patrons, the controversial video for the month. It took a lot longer than I thought it would, ended up a lot longer than I thought it would. I think it's almost 30 minutes and that's after shaving quite a bit off, but I'm really happy with it. And I learned some stuff and I mean, I learned a lot more that I didn't even talk about because it wasn't quite relevant. That's always what happens, but yeah. So if you want to see it, thanks again, guys. New video soon. And yes, this is fake, by the way. I would never spend money on real flowers. <laughs> Goodwill, baby. Aren't orchids expensive? This is, yeah, it's supposed to be an orchid. Aren't they expensive? I've never bought flowers in my life. I have no idea what they got. <laughs> I'm going to say if this were real, I mean, this has like a lot of flowers on it. 15, $20 seems like a lot.